The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. By tomorrow, I will rule the world! <laughs> He's gone. He's not gone. That's the whole point. He's never gone. Is this some radical new therapy? You see? Well, I must have not been paying attention when you were just talking to me. Do you think that you could repeat the question? And I listen more attentively. There must have been something. Wow, I've almost got everything up. How about that? How often does that happen? <laughs> You're fast now. Streamline. Yep. All righty. I guess we'll start the show. Okay. A little surprise guest today. I know. I love that, though. Whenever, whenever Lisa Williams from AFC Urgent Care calls and says, hey, can I come on today? I don't care if I've got five guests. I'm bumping my guest yeah. for Lisa Williams because just look at her. She's just awesome. Hi, how you guys doing? My name is Tom Duggan here at the Paying Attention Podcast. Hi, atop Two Guys Smoke Shop at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. I'm holding back a cough. I'm trying really hard, but it's not going to work. <coughs> oh, boy. Uh, we have a, a very interesting show for you today. We've got Lisa Williams. We're going to get to her in a couple of minutes. I want to thank our sponsors, at least some of our sponsors. I can't go through the whole list because it'll just take the whole show. So we're going to do it in piecemeal. <laughs> uh, Clear Path New England for veterans. We love Clear Path. I, I forgot to mention them verbally, but their their ad is up on the screen every every month, and we love yeah. those guys. They're helping uh, homeless veterans. They're helping veterans get um, get service dogs. They're helping them get all kinds of services. And, uh, and they I are, love that. And they are local. They're, they're, they're such a great organization. I, I'm going to have to do some research on them. Yeah. What do they do? Um, they, they help homeless veterans. Yeah. And they help veterans get like specific services. So they have a, like a, a service dog training program. So if a, if, a, if a veteran has PTSD and they qualify for a service dog, they'll, they'll get the dog, they'll train the dog, and you know, have the, the veteran come in and meet the dog and, and bond with the dog while they're training them. And then... They'll foster the dog, make sure that the dog and the and the new owner, the veteran, get you know get along, and then it's working, and then they get to keep the dog. You're kidding? No, that sounds amazing. It is, and they have all kinds of educational programs, uh, services, uh, benefits for veterans. A lot of veterans don't know that they have a lot of benefits uh, coming to them, yeah. and so Clear Path is is they're doing like an outreach uh, for into the community to make sure that veterans know. That you know what services are available for them, and they've been in a couple of times, and we're going to try and have them back again. I uh, also want to thank McLennan Real Estate Century Twenty One. We love Matt, Janet, and Who Sam. Who doesn't love Matt? I know, right? It's my favorite. And, you know, it's funny. Like when I first met him, I didn't know he was a he was a headbanger. But no, I, he's, I, I, is yeah, he really? yeah. I, I, and I was big into heavy metal when I was in high school. So he started this page on Facebook called um, Head, Headbangers Ball or something like that. And every once in a while, I'll, I'll, I'll catch one of the posts and be like, I remember that band. So he's, he's a good guy, and he's well-rounded, too. You know, he's a pretty good guy. Uh, also, AFC Urgent Care. I think we know them a little bit uh, mm-hmm. in Methuen and North Andover. Marsan and Sun Construction. EIS Investigations. Borelli's Deli, where I go to get my meats Love after the show Borelli's. every week. But they close at 4 on Thursday, so sometimes I don't make it in time, which means I have to send Nancy or somebody else like a couple days later to go get my meats. But always, once a week, we go to Borelli's Deli. <coughs> Tomo's and Happy Crab. Who did I forget? Oh, and Pleasant Valley Landscaping. So I got a couple of things I want to get to before we get to Lisa. I uh, want to give you an update on the Charlie Baker slash Francisco Urena situation. Talked about it for multiple shows. It's hit the Boston Globe. It's hit national news. Francisco Urena was the Secretary of Veterans Services for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. He was wrongly blamed for the deaths of 77 veterans at the Old Soldiers Home in Holyoke. And um, a Globe investigation and an investigation by the legislature who held eight successive meetings. Linda Campbell from Methuen, our state rep in Methuen, um, co-chairs that committee. And their investigation revealed that Francisco Urena, lo and behold, 
Not only was he not responsible for the 77 deaths at the old soldier's home, he was the only one trying to stop it from happening. He was the only one who was sending emails and text messages feverishly to people above him to get the governor's attention, to get the, the National Guard in there to, to, to take care of, because the, all the nurses, because of COVID, called in sick. They didn't want to go in and get, and get COVID and die. So they had no staffing at this, at this nursing home. And it was Francisco that was actually trying to do something to solve it, even though he had no legal responsibility to do so. And the governor blamed him and forced him to resign. Well, came on the show a couple times and said, look, we love Charlie Baker. I've always loved Charlie Baker. I've always considered him a good friend. Um, I hope he apologizes and try, does something to make it right. Unfortunately, he's actually going the other way. He was on Egan and Browdy last week on oh. WGBH and is doubling down defending the Pearlstein report, defending his choice of Mark Pearlstein, the attorney who actually does business with the state, who has a contract with the state, and of course the governor signs all contracts, which to me seems like somewhat of a con conflict of interest. Um, Francisco Urena was hired, though. He did get a job, thanks to our good friend Jim Lyons, who's president of the, who's chairman of the Massachusetts Republican Party. So he has hired Francisco Urena to do veteran outreach for the, for the Massachusetts, G, Massachusetts GOP. And that's a little surprising to me because I had no idea that Francisco Urena was a Republican. Like, I had no idea. I've, I've known the guy my, going back to 2006 when he first came back from Iraq. And I had no idea he was a Republican. He's never been politically involved. I've never seen him at a partisan event. Um, <clears throat> Obviously, it makes sense that Charlie Baker hired him. Maybe he became a Republican when Charlie hired him. But I've, I've never known what his politics were. I've always just known him as the guy that goes out and helps veterans. So he's going to be working for the Mass GOP, trying to do, home, uh, trying to do veteran outreach. And, uh, and, and, and kudos to Jim Lyons for doing that, for seeing that this guy got screwed and that the governor is not in good faith doing what he can to make it right and that he can't get a job because if you Google his name, it says he, he killed 77 veterans in a soldier's home. And Jim Lyons said, no, 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 we'll, we'll hire him. We'll bring him on board. We'll give him a job. And, and so God bless Jim Lyons. If you're listening, Jim, thank you for doing that for Francisco. He is a hero Marine. Still has shrapnel in his face from an IED explosion when he was in Iraq. He really, a Purple Heart recipient. This isn't just a guy that went over and served. This is a guy that went over and served and made serious sacrifices. So I wanted to give you an update on that. Heal Lawrence is having their event right now. I stopped there on my way to the show today. They're at the Clatter today. So if you're in the Lawrence area, go down to the Clatter. Get, uh, you see, see my buddy Brian. They, by the way, have great hot wings. I always judge a food place by their hot wings. Of course. Great hot wings. Right? At the, at the, right? It's so there are so places, important. There are places that I'll go. If the, if the meal is good, but the hot wings aren't that good, I generally don't go back. Right? Uh, of course. So... Uh, a given. They're going to be at, <laughs> at, at, at the Claddagh today from 2 to 4, and what they're doing is very interesting. They're, they're promoting renter's insurance because of all the fires that have happened in Lawrence. You get a lot of three-deckers, five-deckers in Lawrence that have 50 families living in it. One house goes up, and you've displaced, well, they had that big fire two weeks ago, and, and it wiped out 10 families, 10, uh, 10 homes of 10 families. They didn't wipe out the families. Um, and if you have renter's insurance, renter's insurance will help you. Do a lot of people not have renter's insurance? Yeah. Really? Yeah, most people don't have renter's insurance. So Manny and Wayne, Manny, yep. one Manny Gonzalez, our hero firefighter, yep. and Wayne Hayes, great guy, uh, they decided to make this Hill Lawrence nonprofit that they started, which was initially to help fire victims find a place once the, the Red Cross, by the way, only helps you for like three days and they kick you out. Right? They make it look like they're heroes, but they're really kind of not. They, they give you like three days in a hotel and then you're out on the street. So what they did was they, they, they started a registry online, like a wedding registry. Yep. They go to the families and say, what do you need? They may not need a couch, but they might need clothes. They might not need you know, a, a, a kitchen table, but they might need a microwave, right? So they find out from the, from, the, from the fire victims exactly what they need, and then they put it up online. And people can go and go, oh, well, I've got an extra couch, or I've got an extra microwave. And they can tag it. And so this is where I can bring my stuff? Yeah, this is where you can bring your stuff. And, I love it. And, and, and Juan will like come to your house and pick it up. Like Shut you, up. Yeah, if you go on I'm on his cell right now. <laughs> Juan, you're going to be my new BFF. So they're having that event today in, in, in Lawrence. And they're doing something else that's interesting. If you show up there with a bill showing that you purchased renter's insurance for covering you from, May, from June of this year, right, last month, 
to the end of the year, they'll give you a free $20 gift card to a local eatery, a local oh, restaurant that. that donated. So they're doing great work. These people are heroes. They're doing great work in the community. We had them on the show last week, and we want to promote their event today, and they're going to be having others, and we will, uh, we will always promote them when they do. All right, a uh, couple things. Um, should we do the video clips or should we talk to Lisa? Let's do the video clips first. Uh, let, me, let me pull them up so we do them in order. This was hilarious. We f- I found out last week right after the show that the podcast that was, that was taping after my show last week, it's called African Diaspora Diaspora African Connects. Diaspora, Diaspora Connects. Diaspora Connects. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. And I've seen it a couple of times. It's a good show. And it's the guy who runs show. it, don't, don't, let me see if I can get it right. right? I think his name is, is it Kabitha? Kabathi Gatura. Kabathi Gatura. The host. I, I have to tell you, I've watched the show before. I'm not African. It's kind of hard for me to relate, right? But I've watched it. It's a pretty good show. But I watched, he had Willie Lantigua, the chief, the former mayor of Lawrence on, who's running this year for mayor. And by the way, Willie Lantigua has a shot. All of you who are coming on my Facebook page going, yeah, and they're never going to elect him again. No, 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 no. Never underestimate Willie Lantigua. Never underestimate him. He is a master politician. There are four main candidates in that race. There's Brian DePena. There's a Vilma Laura Gonzalez Rodriguez. She's got like eight other names after that. But just remember Vilma with a V, like Wilma extended with a V. And there's Kendris Vasquez, the acting uh, mayor of Lawrence. And then there's Willie. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be some other candidates, but those are the four main ones. It's going to be up to th- those four as to who makes it through the primary. And I got to tell you, it's anybody's game. It's anybody's game. Could Willie win? Absolutely, Willie could win this race. There's no question that Willie could win this race. Could Brian DePena pull it off? Yes, he absolutely could. Could Vilma Laura surprise people and win? Well, she's got the endorsement of Dan Rivera, so yeah, she absolutely could. And then we got Kendris Vasquez, who said he wasn't going to run if they made him acting mayor, kind of like if everybody remembers, Lenny Degnan pulled that, make me acting mayor and I won't run. And then the day that they made him acting mayor, he announced he was running and slapped everybody in the face, which I think is why he lost. I suspect the same thing's going to happen with Kendris Vasquez, but Kendris is a nice kid. And, uh, Merrimack where I did, Huh? I went to Merrimack. Did you really? He did. Oh, he did. Yes. I, I spent a whole show ripping him apart, I think about, a, mo- about a month ago, um, because he is a, an adamant defender of the status quo. And when the Department of Education said, we're not giving Lawrence any more breaks, we're not turning your school system back over to you, you're in receivership, you're staying that way, because you haven't made any progress in the last 10 flipping years, instead of him saying, the home run, the home run answer would have been to send out a press release saying, Department of Education is absolutely right. The teachers and administrators in the Lawrence schools are not giving our kids standard education. They're not getting the same education kids in Andover are getting, and they, and they deserve it. And I'm going to do what I can to change that. Instead of saying that, here's what he said. He pulled a Willie Lantigua. That's racism. That's racism. They're picking on us because we're Latino. No, they're picking on you because your schools suck. They're picking on you because you've been in receivership for almost 10 years. and And the test scores and the level of education has not gone up at all. In fact, it's gone down. It's gone down. So... I like Kendra, and it, it gave me no pleasure to do. You don't do think the kids in Lawrence have a disadvantage than the kids of North Andover and Andover? No. I, I, think, I think Latino kids are just as smart as white kids. They absolutely are. And I are, think, but I think I, the kids I, from I, Lawrence are just as smart as the kids from Andover. Yeah. The difference is, if you take a kid out of Lawrence High Fun. School today, and you put them into Andover High School, that kid's got a 3,000% better shot at getting into college now. Then he is out of Lawrence High School because he's going to go to the end of a high school and he's actually going to get an education. They're actually going to teach him how to read, balance a checkbook, um, learn the Constitution. These kids are graduating from Lawrence High School. They don't know anything. They don't know anything except global warming, transgender bathrooms, and abortion. So I, I, I went after Kendris because I think what he did in that instance was wrong, and I still think it was wrong. And I, I'm hoping that a mayoral candidate is going to come out and say, no more excuses for the Lawrence schools. If you're not doing a good job, we're going to fire you. We're going to move you. We're going to make sure that, this, that the kids in Lawrence at least have the opportunity at getting an, the, as good an education as the kids from North Andover. No more excuses. And I don't want to hear how teachers are heroes and administrators are heroes. And they're, they're not. They're not. Uh, it's basically, you want more accountability. Right. I, I look at the product, right? right. If, if you have, a, if you have a, a GM plant that makes cars... And the people who work at that plant work really, really hard. And they, and they come in extra time and they, and they spend money out of their pocket to buy extra widgets for the machines. 
but the cars don't run when they come off the assembly line. I'm sorry, you, you, you might be a nice person, you might, you might work really hard, you might do a lot of hours, but the product of what, you, the product of, of what you're producing sucks. And we can only measure you as to whether or not does the car work, is it safe when people drive it? Education's no different. The kids in Lawrence, the, the, the Latino kid, 90% Latino in Lawrence, they're just as flipping smart as the kids in North Andover. They should have just as much of a chance at getting a good education and getting into a good college as the kids from Andover and North Andover. And they don't. And to me, it seems like bigotry on behalf of the teachers' unions to make these excuses, well, they come from disadvantaged homes and they're Latino and they're poor and there's violence in their neighborhood. Those are all excuses. Those are all excuses that basically mean Lawrence kids aren't as smart as everybody else. And I'm sorry, I reject that. The guy who's always getting called a racist, I'm the guy that rejects that. They're the ones that embrace that, that theory. So, but could Kendris win is the question. The answer is yes, he could. It's an outside shot, but he could win. Willie could do something monumentally dumb a week before the election, and all his votes could go to Kendris. Vilma Laura could do something monumentally dumb a week before the election, and her votes could go to Kendris. So it's anybody's game. But, okay, so back to the video, right? How are we doing? Great on time. So Kabathi, it's Kabathi, right? Correct. Kabathi asked him, basically, why is it that when, you know, when we Google your name, we see all these negative stories about you? And his answer was, you guessed it, it's racism. Oh. This is great. Um, and we spoke about this, uh, you know, the last time we spoke. Your history as the mayor was, was, was marred with a lot, with a lot of issues that came up that, was, that, that, that brought a lot of things to light. Uh, you know, every, anyone can go and Google Antigua, and you Google Antigua, it comes up with just, there's a lot of stuff here that, <laughs> that, that, that sometimes will not resonate uh, with a lot of people in the right way. Like, uh, like I just, I did it right here. Like Lantigo is sued over alleged campaign finance violations. Okay, um, you know, um, you know, AG Coakley sues Lawrence Mayor over campaign finance ir irregularities. Um, you know, uh, two associates of Lantigo arraigned on corruption. It goes on and on and on, Lantigua, and and all this stuff. Uh, what what is it all about that? Why is it that you know in a lot of circles when they hear Lantigua, they're like, uh, no, that he's not the guy. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine. Oh, he's like, oh, he made over a hundred thousand, and him and his girlfriend they 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 were they were, uh, they were trying to get assistance for heating, and you make over a hundred thousands. This is all this negativity that comes with your name as well. You have you've you know you you've done a lot for the community, yet there are those parties that will say this kind of stuff and it resonates. And the thing about humanity, people resonate on that kind of crap. Can you touch on these things and yeah, tell yeah, us please why do. is course, that why, why is there all that negative press of course, on Mayor? And, I, and I'm I'm glad you, you brought it up. Yeah. It's it's very simple. Yeah. Whenever a minority is getting to be in position of leadership if you don't play the game and you're honest and serious about advancing the cause of the people you're representing, you will have problem with establishment. There were time, and I'm going to answer every one of those topics that you talked. Yeah. So, he, by the way, he didn't. He never talked about the home heating assistance. He said, I'm going to, I'm going to address everything you just brought up. But the only, <laughs> he only brought up like the Lenny Degnan thing and yeah. the campaign finance thing, which he lied about, by the way. He said that his campaign vi finance violations were from before he was mayor. No, it was actually during mayor and after he was mayor. He got hit with campaign finance uh, 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 fines from the Ethics Commission. Now, is that a big thing? Not really. It's really, I mean, he was right about one thing. He said, you know, it's a paperwork thing. I was out of the country for two years. I wasn't paying attention to what paperwork I was supposed to be filling. Um, a lot of that is true. But I think, what I, I think what would make people like Willie more, first of all, to meet Willie Lantigua, as much as you might hate him from his press, if you meet Willie Lantigua, you want to like this guy. He is so charismatic. Mm -hmm. He's such a nice guy to talk to. He seems so honest and open when you talk to him. But you know, what I wanted to hear him say is, yeah, you know what? I screwed up on my campaign finances. Yeah, it was while I was mayor. I should have paid more attention to it. I didn't think it was a big deal. Apparently, the Ethics Commission felt differently, and I've paid my fines. That would have been the home run answer instead of denying it and lying. But he did. He lied. And that's, and, but the thing is, you walk away from Willie wanting to believe the lie because he's so charismatic, because he seems like such a nice guy. 
when you talk to him. I've had a love, hate, hate, love, love, hate relationship with Willie Antigua going back 30 years. We first met, we hated each other, then we ended up working on campaigns together. We loved each other. We were on the phone all the time. We were at Bally's on Essex Street buying each other Bally platters every night. He even hooked me up a couple of times. He's like, hey, Tommy, I heard you spoke up with your girlfriend. I got the perfect girl for you. Like, he is just seems like the, the, he's the nicest guy in the world. But then when he achieved power, when he became mayor, it went right to his head. And he immediately started treating people like shit. He immediately started firing people just because they campaigned for the other guy. And, and he was ruthless about it and spread rumors about them. And his, his number one go-to, as you just heard it, it's racism. Well, listen, I, there's a reason why he says that it's racism. When the question is, why is there all this negativity, there's a reason why he says racism. Because it works. That, that's why Kendris Vasquez, when the, when the Department of Education said, you know, you're not giving the kids in law an inadequate education, well, it must be racism. Because then what's the headline the next day? It's not Lawrence teachers fail their kids. It's not Lawrence fails the students of Lawrence. Uh, it, it's mayor accuses board of direct board of education of racism. And, you know, Willie Lantigua has had some good things that he has done as mayor. He has, he did balance the budget. He did make some very tough choices. He lied about a lot of it, but he still made some good decisions. Um, to, toward the end, he was a much better mayor than he was toward the beginning. But the reason for all the scandal is not because of the color of your skin, Mr. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Lantigua. And I say this with all due respect, and I do respect him. I have a healthy respect for the guy. It has nothing to do with racism. It has nothing to do with the color of your skin that you're a minority. It's because of your attitude. You came into office giving everybody the middle finger. You came into office saying, ha-ha, nobody thought I could do it. Now you can all go screw yourselves. And then you ran over people. And when you were done running over people, you put the car in reverse and backed up over them again. And that's why all the scandals started to happen, because you pissed off everybody. And you made some very bad decisions. Now, he, he spoke about the big scandal that everyone remembers from the Antigua administration. I'm going to give you the skinny on it, because I broke the story. I, I actually pile the reason why Lenny Degden went to jail. And I, I, I take no pleasure in saying that. I, don't think I, you know, I, I hate to be responsible for anybody going to jail, but he, he certainly deserved it. So here's what happened. He's going to explain it, but he, he, he's, he's going to lie. And I want to tell you before the lie, not after the lie this time. Because when you know the backstory, it's hilarious to listen to him try and spin it this way. So, Pete, Pete, Pete I'm sorry. No, that was me. Oh, sorry. Are we doing the Lenny or the Lenny J? Uh, let's, let's, let's go, let's do, um, let's, let's do the first. Yeah, you know, let's just do the first one first. This is a great Lenny. education for me. Oh, great. Right. Yeah, I love it. Go. All right. Prosecute it. Yep. And you have to pay the penalty, right? That's, that's, that's true. You can research, you can go back and see when, if ever, uh -huh. never, have I been uh, accused of anything. Every report. This, this he, one. He, he, your chief of staff went to jail for corruption because he wouldn't dime out on Willie. You know? Ask him if he plans on hiring people who are not corrupt for his next administration. This is the kind of heat that you're getting. No, I'm not getting no heat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. If you read it, because he didn't dime on Willie. What that means when they say you don't dime in somebody yeah. is that they want you to say bad things about somebody. And the system, the way the system works here, you got, you got a crook out there and twist the, his arm so hard, you say yeah. you're going to get 10. But if you give me somebody, I'm only going to get three. Guess what they do, uh -huh. okay? But I'll tell you what happened to, my, to Lenny. Yeah, yeah tell us. One day you meet Lenny, one of the most honest person. <laughs> owns his own business forever. Yeah. His salary, mostly donated. This is what happened. <laughs> and sometimes things happen in a way that's so beautiful. Who is this? You Lenny Degnan is who he's talking about. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so here's what happened, right? So he, he, in the next clip, he's going to say, well, you know, the, the ambulance, what happens is an ambulance and some, and some city property was sent to the Dominican Republic, to Tenares in the Dominican Republic, which, by the way, is Willie's hometown. And he sent garbage trucks and fire, <laughs> fire trucks. And, and, and he... And ambulances. Now, he says, well, that's a private company. Patriot Ambulance, private company. Nothing to do with me. It was the previous mayor made a deal, and then the deal went through after I took office. And they went after I... Well, but here's what really happened, and here's why Lenny Deg 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 Degnan went to jail. Lenny Degnan and two other members of the administration went to the owners of Patriot Ambulance 
And kind of like, you know, the mob, like, nice place you got here. It'd be too bad if it burned down kind yeah, of thing. You know? And they were like, listen. Patriot, wait a minute, I have to, because I know nothing about this, because I actually purposely stay out of politics, because mm-hmm. I, because I just don't want to get involved, other than people that I just like on a personal level. So, Patriot Ambulance? Yes. Like, the Patriot Ambulance? Yes. yes. I, I don't mean to sound like a moron, but okay. Yeah, the Patriot Ambulance, the one that like brings people to the hospital okay. or brings them to therapy. So he therapy. sent them to... Send them to Patriot Ambulance. Yeah. They went in and they met with Patriot Ambulance, and yeah. basically what happened was they said, um, geez, we'd like you to send two brand new ambulances to Tenaris in the Dominican Republic. So and actually ship them there? They, they, they actually did ship them there, yes. Shut the front door. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> no. <laughs> and the thing was, Patriot Ambulance had a had two years left on their contract or three years left on their contract with, with the, the city. city. They were doing business with the city. Yeah. So the mayor signs all contracts with the city, right? All right. So when someone on the mayor's behalf comes in and says, we want you to send two ambulances to the Dominican Republic, and by the way, we want you to fill it with medical supplies, gauze and tape and, yeah. and, and, and gloves and, and, and oxygen tanks. Um, it, you know, Willie's got a four-year term. It would really be too bad if we didn't renew your contract before the end of your term. But the day after that deal was made and the, and the ambulances were actually sent to the Dominican Republic, Willie Lantigua, even though their contract wasn't up for three years, extended it three more years. Yeah. So they had three years left, and they extended it past Willie's term anyway well, can I just, as a thank you right. for them sending it. Right. Now, under the law... Do you see... Can I just... Go I, mean, ahead. I do have... Friends do have family in the Dominican Republic and other places. The amount of pressure people are under to take care of their friends and family. Mm-hmm. And as long as you're following the law, that's I, I, okay. I mean, it's just a tremendous amount of pressure. I mean, I, I have I staff. Bet. and well, I, I mean, I can't imagine the amount of pressure these people are under right. to take care of family that is just unbelievably impoverished. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very poor I'm not countries. saying that that's, that's justified, but I just can't imagine that kind of pressure. But go on with the story. So, so he's right about one thing when he said that Mayor Sullivan was sending city vehicles to D- Dominican. That's true. But those city vehicles went before the city council. They were voted on legally. Yeah. It was signed off by the comptroller. Like the, there's, there's a process, process that you have okay, to go yeah. through. And because this was a private company that Willie kept saying, it's a private company, private company, not me, not me. Right, but that private company has a contract with you. Right. You're the chief executive of the city that signs that contract, that can renew that contract, or that can terminate that contract. So they may not be, they may be a private company, but the courts found that that was extortion. And that's why Lenny Degnan went to jail. They offered Lenny a deal if he would tell them what Willie's involvement in that was. Right. And, and Lenny Degnan, for all of his faults, was loyal enough to, uh, to Willie Lantigua that he said no when he went to jail. He took the heat. So that's, that's why the comment of, you know, are you going to hire more competent people that aren't corrupt? Uh, we all know that Willie was behind it because we all know Willie. We all know how Willie works. Could you prove it in court? Not without, Willie, not without Lenny Degnan's testimony. So he's trying to make it sound like you nothing just say bad like he was really being a happened. nice guy, that he's trying to help out his yeah, family. Yeah, he's and trying his to help the, right, the Dominican. And, and I could see myself going to jail for something like that. Right, right. I, I, not even knowing right. that I was doing something completely illegal. All right, uh, we're, we're really, I okay. have way too much time. Um, Show the clip. How long, how long is this Lenny jail clip? Should we? Because I already explained it. Yeah, we can skip that one. All right, so let's go right to... There is one thing Willie said at the end of this, and this is what makes Willie a genius, because he's so right about this, and literally, I'm the only person on the planet who has ever talked about this topic, and I've talked about it publicly, and I get called a racist every time I do, but here it is from Willie Lantigua, and he's so, so right about this that I thought if I'm going to give you... Myself. If I'm going to give you the negative, I'd at least give you the positive. Yeah. Here's something Willie said about the drugs and the crime in Lawrence that's absolutely true. Everything and we're able to do so much work together. We make fun of all our friends who live in Lawrence. We call them, they live in lawless. Why, why do we call it lawless? Why is that? Why? Why do we say lawless? Because you guys that come from the outside want to do things your way, and then you blame us, man. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> is that why? No, is that no. why? Is that why? No, I, crime rate, crime rate. No, no, crime well, rate. I'll, I'll tell you why. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you why. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that goes with the reason why some people talk really, ill about me because uh-huh. I don't take it. 
Ask me through in how many methadone clinics they have. Right. Okay. At North Andover, how many they have. Go Andover. Go Tewksbury. Go around. Why should we, Lawrence, take care of the problems for all. all the community around there? Absolutely. Why? So wait a minute. Yes. All the clinics are... They don't have it. We only have it in Lawrence. Right. So everybody that needs special service, they come here. And that's okay. But what about what happened with those who don't follow up the treatment? What do they say? Okay. Why do people that come out of jail halfway, whatever they call it, halfway houses, don't yeah. go out of halfway house at their community because they don't have it? Right. Lauren had many. Cannot tell you where because I break the law. Many. So whenever those people are freely but still have a substance abuse problem because that's a disease, where do they stay? They stay in Lawrence. So... Absolutely right. He's he's so. We did a whole. We did more than one show on this. We I think we did at least two or three shows on this as to why Lawrence. Because we, we do homeless outreach with TMF, the family, uh, uh, the, the movement family. Um, in fact, Lisa, thank you. At AFC has sponsored a number of dinners over there to, to help feed the homeless. But we t- we actually, unlike most politicians and people who talk about this stuff, we actually sit down and talk with the homeless and find out their stories. And 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 what we have found and what I have found is exactly what Willie is saying. You know, if, you're, if you are, and I said this during the last mayoral debate in Methuen two years ago, I said, what are you guys going to do for the homeless people from Methuen? Because right now, if you own a, a $500,000, $800,000 home in Methuen, you've paid taxes to your town your whole life, or North Andover, or Methuen, uh, or Andover, and suddenly your company goes under, or your wife takes you for all your money, and you end up homeless, is the, are, there any, the are there any services for you in Methuen? <laughs> no, there aren't. Are there any services for you in North Andover? No, there aren't. Are there any services for you in Andover, Wilmington? No. Tewksbury? No. So where do they go? It, 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 Lawrence is attracting the most negative elements of our society, the people who are at their worst in life, into the city, and you're putting all of these people... You, we talk to the homeless every Wednesday night. Two-thirds of the homeless that we service are not from Lawrence. Our buddy Ralph that we see, he's one of our favorite homeless people that we, that we take care of because he's like one of the nicest guys in the world. He's from New York. Hmm. We had another guy from Philadelphia. I'm like, why are you here from Philadelphia? Well, I heard Lawrence had the services. The guy came from Philadelphia. So if, if, if Methuen, North Andover, Andover had homeless shelters for people who were their residents who suddenly became homeless, transitional housing for their residents that suddenly became homeless... Lawrence wouldn't have half the problems that they have. Willie touched on it perfectly. And he's, he's so got his finger on the pulse on that. And, you know, if he were to get elected, if he were to get elected, I think th- th- at least that's the one good thing that would come out of it, is that he would be holding other communities accountable and saying, hey, Methuen, don't send us your homeless people. Take care of your own homeless people. We're going to set up homeless shelters for our people. Yeah. And Dan Rivera kind of took that tone except Dan Rivera's solution was to bulldoze all the homeless tents because he didn't want anybody to see them. He wanted to deny that there was a homeless problem in Lawrence because most of those people, they're not from here. But guess what? They're here now. And when your Democrat party runs around registering people to vote who are homeless, it's where they are, not where they came from. So they are Lawrence residents now. And he's right. Someone comes in for a methadone treatment and maybe they don't follow up on their treatment and the next thing you know, they're on Arlington Street buying heroin and they're in the daybreak homeless shelter or they're on the streets in a tent. And then people like us have to go out and bring them blankets and food. The police are harassing them. The DPW is bulldozing their tents if the mayor's pissed off that day. And it, it's, it's such a problem. It's such a huge problem. And to have somebody in that office that at, at least gets that, that's huge. Uh, also, by the way, Brian DePina also gets that. He hasn't made a lot of public statements about it, but I've spoken to him about it, and he does, he does get it. Um, there's a homeless pro- problem, though, throughout the nation. Yeah, I mean, there I was, is. I was in California two months ago, and that's <laughs> there's a. I mean, it's 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 everywhere. We've got we've got less than five minutes left. Can we go just a couple minutes off for Lisa? She can just promote her. I was going to say, how about we get to Lisa? Okay. So Lisa's here from AFC because you have new hours. You're going to be offering some new services. Yes. But although this has been extremely fascinating. I've learned so much. I love your show. Thank you. 
Um, although our views are polar opposite, I just need to say that for. <laughs> but that's but that's good though. Yeah, it's good yeah, that we can have yeah. different yeah, views and still I, be friends. I respect and... your. I respect just about everyone's opinion. Although my views are different, that's just like my house, <laughs> just like my home. Um, so yes, we do have new hours starting July first. We're open um, every day eight to eight. Wow. Yeah. That's great. I know. I so know, during right? COVID, you guys were like, you you had closed, didn't you close yeah, the for a while, and then you yeah we had to hours? yeah because of staff we didn't have staff right yeah we didn't have, we didn't have staff we were yeah. closed for. Uh, a, a little while in North Andover, and then we opened up. We were open eight to six. Mm-hmm. Now we're open eight to eight uh, Monday through Friday, and eight to six on the weekends. And starting July first, we're going to be open eight to uh, eight to eight even on the weekends. Great. But our holiday hours for July third and fourth are uh, eight eight to six on the third, and on July fourth, we're closing at four o'clock. Okay. Just so, just but you're still open July fourth. Most places aren't even yeah. open July fourth. No, 4th, no, no. So we want to give our staff a break because right. they've it's been a very challenging year. I bet. Them. I bet with all the with all the COVID testing yeah. and the vaccines and everything else. I remember yes. you guys had these big these big uh, box trucks oh, outside God, it was to just... to give people tests. Oh, and you also crazy. you also said something about you wanted to. You want you want to start offering um, so we're going to do immigration Im- immigration physicals in the next couple of weeks, nice. and we have a fantastic immigration process for people, and it's for people who be- want to become citizens. Yeah, yeah. I think it's great anytime somebody comes I'm to this so country excited. and they want to become yeah. a citizen. I am Because so there are excited. so many people coming here, they don't want to become citizens. <laughs> There's a lot of people that come here, they just want to make a lot of money, send it back home, and they don't want to be citizens. So, so the ones that want to be citizens, those are the people yeah. we want. We want I, those people. I found that people, you know that are here working, they, they're just under so much pressure to help family at home, which of course they are. So I can understand, you know, people wanting to do that mm-hmm. and maybe getting themselves into trouble and not even realizing, you know, I'm the person that I am. I'm like, she's so nice. A bleeding heart she's to a too, fault. Too nice. <laughs> like, too nice. I could see myself like getting in trouble for stuff like that. But My, yeah, we are, we are very excited to be, to offer the immigration physicals and, you know, at a very, affordable cost because they're they are very expensive because the um the the exam is actually quite uh intense so i will keep you posted on exactly that time we're training staff we have to have a special doctor that comes in and does them so I'm very excited if you have that. a need for some kind of administrator that can work from home yeah <laughs> you let me know and i'll be more than happy to help you okay all right yeah. and everybody's looking for work or they, they say everybody they say everybody's looking for for help but then I offered this help wanted thing in my newspaper, and I got two responses. And I thought we'd get like a hundred responses; wouldn't be able to like you know we'd have to add pages for it. And we got two responses. And I think what that says more is that people who are hiring don't think it's going to work. They don't think anything's going to work. They're very discouraged. I think. I don't think. Well, yeah. Gonna... I mean, I think people are so used to not working. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, and getting paid to stay home. But, you know, get off your ass and go out and work. <laughs> Some of us, like you and me, I worked straight through COVID. I mean, I was here the, the Thursday of the lockdown. They locked down on a Wednesday. I was here the next day. And I think Neil Perry was in here the, like the week after that. And um, I never stopped delivering papers. We never stopped publishing papers. I never stopped doing any of the things that I do. And um, a lot of people got paid to stay home. And now it's over, all right? Let's, let's just accept the fact that it's over. Stop milking the system. Go and get a job. And I don't know. I, I, even with the advertising, I, f- I figured when, when COVID was over, people would be like, okay, well, you know, now we want to advertise our business, what our new hours are, what are our new restrictions for operations. And it's like pulling teeth. Everybody got their stimulus and they blew it. They didn't save it for what, you know, once this is over, mm-hmm. how we can go back to work. And so now everybody's chasing everybody for money, and everybody says that they want help, but no one wants to actually pay anything to help. So that's it. anything else, Lisa Williams, my fine, fine no, friend. No, I just wanted to thank you very much. As for a friend, though, you're thanking me as a friend. Yes, of I'm course. Sorry. Yes, of course. <laughs> it's just it's an inside joke. I know. Um, well, I'm I'm ver- these races coming up, the mayor races. Mm-hmm. Like it's going to be very interesting. I know Jim Ferentini's coming up for re-election, and um, uh, his name is. Cooper, the guy running against him, he's a hero police officer and a winner of the Officer Tom Duggan Hero Police Officer Award three years ago at our at our annual bash. And I think that's I think that's going to be a lot closer than people think. I think Jim's got to got he's he's going to have to sing for his supper on this one. 
I think this guy Cooper is going to give him a run for his money. You think so? I do. I think he's going to give him a run for his money. I think the last guy that ran Talkie, had he understood the budget more and had he understood things besides the police department more, I think he he probably could have done better. But I, 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 th- I think Cooper gets it. I think he gets the inside workings of politics. He's been in movies. He's been an actor. Good-looking guy, a lot of money. So um, we'll be following that. We'll be following the Lawrence Mayor's race. We'll follow the Methuen Mayor's race. But we all know Neil Perry's going to get reelected, so it doesn't really matter. Right. Uh, but we will follow it. And um, I'm hoping we'll, to we'll see you guys, the, you know, kiss and make up. Yeah, well, we'll see. You know, I love you both. We'll dearly. see. We'll see. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm, I'm open to anything, but, you know. We'll see. All right. I want to thank my sponsors, AFC Urgent Care, Lisa Williams. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you uh, I will for al- having I will me. always, I'll even bump, if I have five guests, I will bump them if Lisa Williams says she wants to come on. I love having you here. McLennan Real Estate uh, in Methuen. Uh, Marsan and Sun Construction. Give Ronnie Marsan a call if you need anything done in your house. Now is the time to do it. Mm-hmm. Between construction and landscaping, uh, Pleasant Valley Landscaping, they're not taking landscaping jobs, but they are taking small construction jobs. So give them, give uh, my buddy Dave Consoli a call. He's going to be coming in, I think, either next week or the week after. He emailed me yesterday, and I didn't write it down yet, but he will be here. Uh, Clear Path for Veterans New England. They're taking care of our veterans, uh, especially our homeless veterans, and there certainly aren't enough people doing that. EIS Investigation Training and Gun Training. Borelli's Deli, where I'm getting my meats after the show, if I can get out of here in time. Teddy Fairburn, who's a workers' comp attorney. We love Teddy Fairburn. Listen, give the guy a call. He, 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 he's been doing this for like 35, 40 years. He's really good at what he does. Tomo down here on, uh, on Broadway in Methuen. And uh, Happy Crab. We love Happy Crab. Who do we leave out? Nobody. So we got to. Sounds like Melvin Taylor says we got to go home. So go home already. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.